Okay, chemists, it's time to learn how to name molecules that contain functional groups. We're not going to do all the functional groups in this lesson, but we will learn some of the most common ones that we will see. Uh, and we need to do this because organic chemistry is a language class. We need to be able to speak in organic chemistry so that when we communicate this, not just through our drawings, but through our writings and more importantly, our spoken language, uh, we can talk to other chemists about these molecules and we describe how reactions work and how we make molecules for the benefit of society. That's what this is all about. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is those prefixes we already learned when we talked about hydrocarbons in the beginning of this unit. Those are still valid, meth, eth, but prop, etc. Et for one carbon, two carbon, four, and three. I said them out of order just there. Uh, and branches, methyl, ethyl, phenyl, vinyl, tert-butyl, we still use those as well. The difference is now if we have a functional group in the molecule, that will take priority in terms of how we number our longest carbon chain. It's not just about getting the lowest sum of numbers with your branches if it's not just an alkene. If there's even an alkene or, or an oxygen containing functional group, you want to get to that as fast as possible. So let's start with just alkenes, a carbon-carbon double bond. The simplest of all is a two-carbon alkene. And all we do is change the suffix. This is no longer ethane. You drop the ane and it becomes ethene. Now this happens to have a common name, so I'm gonna give that to you as well. This is also called ethylene. So you will see and hear both. Uh, one is the systematic name, one is the common name. Both are acceptable, I would argue, in the entire chemistry community. Uh, now what if we have not such a common one, but a four carbon chain? Well, this is not butane, this is butene. We have to say where the ene is. And it's acceptable to say that it's on the first carbon because if you number this, one, two, three, four, the alkene goes from carbon one to two. Now we don't say one, two because we know it starts on one carbon and ends on the next. So this is one butene, but that's actually more of a common name. The true systematic way, as of about 20, 30 years ago, is to put the number right before the suffix that dictates what that functional group is. So this is technically but-1-ene. That is the most correct way to name that molecule. 1-butene is perfectly acceptable though because we only have one functional group so we know what we're talking about. We'll see as we get more things in a molecule it becomes quite cluttered to have all these numbers out in the front of a molecule and which number goes with which functionality is a little ambiguous. So they started to put it right before the suffix. Uh, then we get to a five carbon chain. This is not pentane, this is pentene. And to say where the ene is, well, if I number it one, two, three, four, five, it's on the second carbon. So this would be pent dash two dash ene, or the alkene starts on carbon two. Now we talked about isomers in our previous unit, our previous lesson, uh, and this molecule has what's called a geometric isomer. There's another way to draw pent 2 ene and it looks like that. Those are not the same molecule. They're not interconvertible. The first one has hydrogens that are pointing in opposite directions of each other. I can draw them in. There's one there, and there's a second one right there. This one I drew to the uh, right of this has hydrogens pointing on the same side, and when they are on the same side, as opposed to the opposite side, they are, they are different from each other. When they're on opposite sides, this is called a trans-pent-2-ene, and when on the same side, it's called a cis-pent-2-ene. You really just look at the hydrogens, and that tells you if you have what's called a cis or a trans-alkene geometry, and they are not interconvertible because of that pi bond. That pi bond adds just enough extra energy so that free rotation about that bond is not allowed. You can't do it. The way you can rotate around single bonds, that's much easier. What about if the functional group is in a cyclic compound like this? Same thing, you just change the suffix. So this was cyclohexane, we make it cyclohexene. And since there's nothing else in this molecule, numbering it with a one is redundant. So we don't even bother because you don't need that information. If there was something else in the molecule, we would add numbers to show where things are. Okay, up next we get to the alkynes. Uh, the suffix is there, we change the suffix to ine. So instead of ethane, this is ethine to start us off. Uh, this has a common name as well. The common name is acetylene. So you will hear that as well. Uh, the one right after that, look at how you draw an alkyne, by the way. This is a great time to practice how to draw alkynes correctly. That's an SP hybridized 
linear carbon atom, so we don't draw an alkyne with five carbons like that. That looks like someone who doesn't understand the geometry. Uh, even though it has the right connectivity, there's, there's linear geometry about that carbon, so we draw it as such. You can just see how the line just sort of extends, and sometimes when you do it by hand, you just leave a little space, a tiny little space, and then you really highlight that that is a separate carbon from that, and that that is a linear carbon. Anyway, let's get back to the names. This is five carbons, uh, so this is pent, and it would be a pentine. I gotta say where the ine is. Uh, it's on the first carbon, so this is pent one ine. Alternatively, you could say one pentine. That's acceptable as well. Uh, next to it, this is four carbons. One, two, three, four. So this is a but two ine as opposed to but one ine. And what about two alkynes? Well, remember when we had two branches, like two methyls or two ethyls. We put di in front of that. Uh, you do the same thing when you have multiples of the same functional group. So this is a, let's check our numbering, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a hepta chain, this is seven carbons, and it's a diine. We have two alkynes, and they are respectively on carbons one and six, or they start on carbons one and six. So this would be hepta one comma six diine. That's the systematic way of naming. Okay, now let's get to some oxygen-containing functional groups, starting with the alcohol. Uh, the alcohol uh, on one carbon of a two-carbon chain changes ethane. You just drop the E and add the suffix all. I don't need to say ethane one all or one ethanol. There's only one place for the OH to be on a two-carbon chain. Once I get to three carbons, however, there's two ways it can exist. You have propan one all, and right next to it, it's isomer propan 2 all. Now folks say just propanol. They usually mean that first one. The second one has a common name. This is called isopropanol, and that's the main ingredient in rubbing alcohol that you can buy at most drugstores. So if you've ever seen or heard of that, that's what that is. It's a mixture of that and water usually. Okay, here's our first example of a functional group and a branch on the same carbon chain. Uh, if I number my carbon chain, finding the functional group first, it's here, that's number one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. So I have an alcohol on carbon one and a methyl on carbon three, and it is a four carbon chain. So this is a bute, this is a butanol, actually this is a methyl butanol, and I gotta say where all those things are. So this is gonna be a three methyl but dash, or actually butan, dash, one, dash, all. And here's a good example of why putting the number before the suffix makes a lot of sense. Sometimes you might see the number before the parent chain. That's still okay in this case because we only have one functional group, but this is the more correct systematic way. And let's get to another oxygen-containing functional group. Let's go to ketones. Uh, this is the simplest of all ketones. This is propanone and it's redundant to say two propanone. There's no such thing as one propanone. That would be an aldehyde. Uh, this has a common name. This is called acetone. This is found in nail polish remover and used as an organic solvent and uh, cleanser for glassware if you ever work in an orgo lab quite a lot. Uh, right next to it is a four carbon chain. This is butanone. You can think about why didn't you say two butanone? Well, it's redundant to say two butanone as well. There's no such thing as three butanone. That's numbered incorrectly. There's no such thing as one butanone or four butanone that's numbered incorrectly, or it's not even a ketone. That would be an aldehyde. Next to it, we have a cyclohexane with a ketone on one of the carbons. So we get cyclohexanone, just like our cyclohexene example up above. Not necessary to number in this case. And now we come to our first example with multiples of, of different functional groups. We have an alkene and a ketone, and the ketone takes priority. We're actually going down this list of functional groups right now from lower priority to higher priority. A ketone overrides an alcohol, which overrides an alkyne and alkene in terms of who gets the lower number. So I would number this particular carbon chain right to left and give it one, two, three, four, like so. So if I wanted to use those numbers, I would say I have a but, uh, Three, in, two, own. 
that tells me where the alkene is, where the ketone is, and that it's a four carbon chain. Although if you think about it, there's uh, no way to draw a butenone and fit this formula other than in those respective spots. Otherwise it's either not a ketone or it's an impossible molecule. So you could actually call this particular one just butenone. You could think about making it a five or six carbon chain and those numbers become more important, uh, but I'm still gonna leave them there. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna look at aldehydes, uh, which have a suffix al, pronounced al. Uh, distinguished from all the alcohol, so similar but still pronounced and spelled differently. So the first one is ethan, drop the E and make it al. It has a common name. This is called acetaldehyde. And right next to it, we get to a four carbon chain. It's not butane. You drop the E, you add the suffix al, and you get butanal. Now, aldehydes have to be on a terminal carbon. We can't have an aldehyde in the middle of a carbon chain. That would be a ketone. So you actually are safe just calling that butanal. There's, it's redundant to say one butanal. Chemists don't like wasting their words and their writing space, and we've got time for that. So we just give you the most efficient name while still following all the rules and giving you all the information. Uh, here we have a propanal with a methyl on uh, one carbon in, and there's only one way for that to exist. So this is methyl propanal. You know, why don't I say two methyl propanal? You can, uh, but it's redundant in this case. There's no way to have methyl propanal other than it being on the second carbon. Otherwise, it would be named incorrectly. Uh, this is a common name. This is called iso aldehyde. You don't need to know all these common names. Uh, I'm just giving them to you to get you a sense that sometimes there's more than one way to name things, and we sometimes have to be familiar with a couple of differences. Okay, now we have two functional groups and a branch to close out our intro examples before we practice this. Uh, I look for the highest priority functional group, that's the aldehyde, so that gets carbon one. I'm going right to left, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, the aldehyde is on carbon one, and that's implied by having the molecule end with the suffix al, so I don't need to number that. The ene on carbon five and six means I give it number five, and then a methyl on number three, and this is a six carbon chain. So putting all that together, I get my branch of three methyl out in front, this is a six carbon chain, so hex, uh, this is not hexane, this is not even just hexene, this is hexene al to put both the ene and the al. I have to say where the ene is, it's on carbon five. So this is hex five ene, and then just end it with al, and I know that it's on the first carbon. All right, now let's see if we can turn this around. Let's take a name and turn it into a drawing, and that will reinforce some of these rules. Starting with cyclooctyme. Notice those two O's back to back. It's almost as if there should be an umlaut in there to make them uh, pronounced differently. Uh, cyclooctyne is an eight-membered ring with an alkyne in it. And you might go, oh, this is just a stop sign, or an octagon, or one of those is a triple bond. Sure, that's accurate, but remember what we said earlier about alkynes? That doesn't show me the linear geometry. So how do I show a linear geometry about that alkyne? I'm gonna start with the alkyne. Those two carbons are connected but the carbons connected on either side are also in a straight line. All four of them are in a linear arrangement. That's half of the carbons. So I've got four more, and it's gonna be a little bit exaggerated, but that's a cyclooctyne molecule drawn where I pay attention to the geometry, if that's your, your preference in this case. Uh, right next to it, another eight carbon uh, molecule, but not in a ring. Octanal is eight carbons, two, four, six, and eight. And then the al means I have an aldehyde and it's gotta be on one of the carbons on the end. Again, I'm partial to drawing in the H, you don't have to. Cyclopent is a five carbon chain. Uh, I have the suffix all, so there's an OH. And they didn't number it because it's redundant. It's gotta be just somewhere on the ring. Down below that, one, two, three, propane triol. So we have a three carbon chain. We have three alcohols, triol, and there's one on each, one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. There's propane triol. Don't forget to draw the H's in when they're attached to oxygen. That's also called glycerin. Cyclopentene, five carbon chain with an alkene in the ring, no numbering needed. Propanal, three carbon chain, aldehyde on the end, no numbering needed. 
and our last row gets a little more complicated. Let's see, hydroxypentanone. Okay, the main functional group here is a ketone. And notice what I had to do. The alcohol is now named as a branch. So when you have multiple functional groups, one of them gets priority and becomes the suffix. And then with the exception of alkenes and alkynes, which also sort of get lumped into the suffix, ane becoming ene or ein. Uh, but for other functional groups like al uh, alcohols, they become branches and they have respective names for what those branches look like. Uh, for hydroxy to pentanone, this is pent. So five carbons, so two, three, four, five. There's, an, there's a ketone on carbon two and an OH on carbon four. That's 4-hydroxy-2-pentanone. Frankly, it's named slightly incorrectly. It really should be 4 hydroxy pent and 2 own But I think we said this earlier. Sometimes the number goes right before the suffix, as it is here. Sometimes it goes in front of the uh, carbon chain prefix, and that's acceptable in this case. Okay, 2-isopropyl, 5-methyl cyclohexanol. I read the end of the name first. Cyclohexanol, 6-carbon chain with an OH. Now, because it's in a ring, it's implied that carbon 1 is where the OH is. So that's carbon 1, and I'll just go around the ring and number the rest, and that'll help me see where the rest of those branches are. On 2, I have an isopropyl. Remember, that looks like that V coming off of a carbon. And then carbon five, I have uh, a methyl. And then lastly, one ethyl, five methyl cyclohexene. Again, I'm gonna look at the end of the name first. Cyclohexene is a six carbon chain with an alkene. Uh, and because it's in the ring, it's implied that that is carbons one and two. So I'll put one and two. And that means this is three, this is four, this is five, and this is six. So where is the rest of my stuff? Well, off of one is an ethyl, and off of five is a methyl. So there's one ethyl, five methyl cyclohexene. Okay, so functional groups uh, change the suffix of the name of a molecule. If necessary, we have to identify where they are by the number. If there's multiples of them, we use things like die and try to communicate that. And if there's multiple functional groups that are different, we prioritize uh, which one is the highest priority and they're actually given uh, in this list we went through today and that might make other functional groups become branches. More often than not, we'll see names and have to draw them. Uh, it's obviously more challenging, I think, to be given a structure and turn it into a name than the other way around. But you will practice this all year long. This is just an introduction to this and your skill set will certainly grow as we do this throughout the year.